So following on our wonderful podcast this week about money by She Does Financial Solutions, it's really made me think about the choices and the journey that I've taken about money. Um, It's probably going to be short and sweet, just like the amount of commas in my bank account. (laughs) I don't even think they were commas. They were just full stops and a lot of zeros and not a lot of other numbers. And I'm tired living like this, you know. I think for women, uh, we've grown up as we have to be breadwinners. We have to be head of our households because sadly, we can't rely on the men around us to do it for us. Primarily, we earn more than them. I've had every single relationship in my life that I've earned more than my partner. And that's a sad state of affairs to be in because ideally, Cinderella was supposed to be saved by a prince. And this prince was supposed to have a good credit rating. He was supposed to have money in his bank account. He was supposed to buy me what I needed. Okay, let's go 2020. He was supposed to buy me the Birkin. I don't even want the Birkin, but do you know what I mean? It's long. I feel that there is such disparity in our financial situation between men and women that impacts relationships totally, completely. How do we expect our men to feel upstanding and leaders if they are earning sometimes 15, 20 grand less than us? But you know what? I don't even blame myself for that. I worked hard. I pushed myself through college. I pushed myself through uni. I pushed myself through my master's. Did he do that though? No. Maybe he was shot in until he was 25 and then decided, you know what, before feds get me, let me get a real job. It's too late. You've missed years. So why should I feel bad that I earn more money? But they make you feel bad. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of men that feel castrated by their women that earn more money than them. And then you as a woman feel that you've got to fill in the gaps. Oh, I'll pay for the holiday. I'll pay for this. You need new trainers. I'll pay for that. PS5, I'll pay for that because you're not earning as much as me. It's bull and I'm over it. But I've also dated the men that earn more than me and they're pricks. I'm not going to lie. A lot of them are pricks. They either think that you want them for your money, for their money, sorry, or they've just got no personality and no swag and no street appeal. I find that who I attract is the man that's poor or the man that doesn't have too much money. You know, like your, I'd say your 30K man. I want to put it out there. That's a 30K man, your average guy. And there's nothing wrong with him. But he's intimidated by me. Just saying it like it is. And this is a problem. Why are you talking to me like that? Why are you talking that? Because you earn more money. You think you're better than me. You know them call, them conversations? I can't deal with them. But ultimately, a lot of my finances has been affected by men. I was in a really bad relationship when I was like 21. And I met someone. I don't even care if he's listening, to be fair. And he was working for a car phone warehouse at the time. And he took out mobile phones in his work name. Um, on my 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 name, my credit, so much so tens and thousands of debt. He was selling them as bashers. Yep. And I was young. I was yeah, twenty one. I didn't know no better. I didn't know about it until I was nearly charged with fraud against Orange. I'd never taken out an Orange phone in my life, but I started to get bailiffs at my door for Orange, Vodafone, BT. I think it was called BT Sonnet back then. This time, all I had was a one-to-one phone. But I found that this dude was using my data to take out mobile phones. It took me 10 years to clear the debt. It was on my, no, probably less. It was on my 30th birthday. The year of my 30th, I should say. That I finally paid off nearly £15,000 worth of debt. And to the point that the dude was cheating on me the whole time anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't even know it. But he ended up being found out to not be a fraudster, but also to be a cheater. But I guess he looked at me and he thought, yeah, she's going to uni. Sometimes I was a occupational therapy technician. So I was earning probably about 25. So after my degree, 25 grand at 25. And that's what we said. At 30, I've got to earn 30. At 40, I want to earn 40. At 50, I want to earn 50. Obviously, that's changed now. But he didn't care and because of that I got CCJs I got defaults I got known to various financial agencies um, and it has even in my ripe old age at 38 still 
haunted me. I cannot take out a mobile phone with Vodafone or Orange because of those incidences that someone else did to me. Can you believe that? Finances can mash you up for life. There is nothing more devastating than looking at your credit score and it says poor. I don't even know what's the one below poor because I've been there. And no matter what you do to try and fix it, you can't because you're sinking. There's nothing worse than hearing the postman at your door and thinking to yourself, oh my God, what letter is it? I went for a really bad phase of not opening letters. I did not open letters because I was scared of what was in there. I couldn't pay them. So I thought, what's the point? And this was not long ago. This was maybe a couple years ago that I was, I got into another position you know, after a, a wedding, you know, I budgeted for a wedding and I had said, oh, no more than 25 grand. It was more than that. I used up every piece of my savings for my wedding, every single piece. I had a house. I sold with a friend. I sold the house, all my profit. And I'm talking nearly 20 grand went into my wedding. And look what's happened to that wedding. It was just a day and I don't even have the marriage to show for it. So my relationship with money is not a good one. My relationship with finances isn't a good one. Because as I said, always I feel like I'm a hamster in a cage. And then I had a daughter. And for all of her life, I was a sole investor in her education. So her nursery fees, I paid £1,200 a month by myself from the day she was born. That has killed me. It has crippled me. Everybody's like, oh, now she's in school. So it must be better. No, it's not. Because now you have to pay £10 a day for breakfast club, £10 a day for after school club. You have to play for any gymnastic classes you want, any dance classes, ballet, tap, modern. You've got to buy shoes. You've got to do hair. You've got to do everything else. Playtime, play dates, birthday parties. It's a lot of money. Children are no joke. Maybe when you've got two doing it together, but me as one, the sole I'm going to stand out and say the sole provider for my child and whoever want vex can vex. It's hard. It's really, really, really hard having to make sure all her needs are met because I have to feed her. I have to ensure the house is of a standard that she needs to live in. So that's furnishings, etc. I need to make sure it's heated. I need to make sure it's safe. I need to make sure she has stimulation educationally. I need to make sure she has stimulation just for, for play and socialization. I need to make sure on the weekend she has um, enough activities to keep her busy and to, sti to stimulate her. I need to make sure she's going to school, buy all of her uniform, buy her shoes that she kicks in every other day, buy the clothes that she grows in and out of every other month, ensure that her hair is done well, ensure that she's got, you know, I can't do cane road, so don't cuss me, but yes, I pay someone to do it, but that's the prerogative in it. I never had sisters, I never had whatever to help me learn how to cane road, okay? Don't judge me, but <laughs> I spend a lot on my child. I've sacrificed loads. I don't even wear nails anymore because I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I even stop buying bundles. Same thing, you know, because my child and her financial needs are the most important. But it's it's hard and it's devastating when you've got to fork out a lot of money and you work. I work tirelessly. You know, sometimes I work 45 hours a week and, I, and more. And at the end of the month, I can't buy myself that sexy pair of boots that I want. It's devastating. And I can only say for all of those that are in this position, I'm hoping there is sunshine. There is some light and I'm not waiting until she's 18. But, you know, people are talking about multiple streams of income. And I agree. When Before my child, yeah, hmm, I was a hustler. I used to be drips and drabs, whether it be hosting money. I used to do little... Uh, can't really talk the business out here but I used to do lots of things to get little bits of money and I was able to do so because I didn't have a child that I needed to be home for I didn't have commitments I could just wing it you know and I used to get money drop in drop in drop in but I don't even know if it's me that has these bad financial choices because even with that money I should have stacked more 
but I was spending, I was so busy spending on what? And I've got nothing to show for it. So I was thinking again about my childhood and who educated me about money? No one. I can honestly say that my dad was a contractor. He was a builder, but he used to get paid in rum. Let's have it right. My dad was an alcoholic and he said, oh man, just give me a drink. That's how my dad would get paid. He would do work for weeks and then he would, you know, a nice lady would bat her eyelids and she would pay him in a bottle of Eldorado rum. He was not the person to show me about finances. My dad opened and shut businesses like they were going out of of season. He always had arguments with my mum about, you know, you're not supporting me. You don't support me enough. You earn, you earn the money. You earn the government's money. My dad used to say, you earn the white man's money. I'm not like you. I'm self-employed. But you're self-employed with no money. So my mum was a nurse. But she was paying for mortgage for a three-bedroom house. And she wasn't around. And she did extra hours, overtime, whatever the case may be. She didn't instill with me those, those messages about money either. My mum made bad financial choices. My mum thought that at three years old, I should be, or four, in private school. She wanted to give me the opportunities that other children were afforded. But she couldn't afford it. So much so that I got kicked out of private school due to unpaid bills. Unpaid school fees. It's embarrassing, but I would talk my truth and I would say that my parents did not instill with me the value of money, how to spend, how to make right choices. They didn't. My dad got me a grand piano, but he didn't pay for anyone to teach me. So he got someone to print out um, musical sheets and he used to lock me in the living room for hours to learn how to play the piano on my own at 10. Why did you, why did you even bother? Why did you spend that money on that piano? ignorance that's what happened there ignorance and then I got um yeah let's just say I I moved a lot of times and I had an unstable start and then I got the student loan now for someone who didn't have money to get money and even though that money was supposed to have been spent on my education my accommodation I went out and bought a car I bought a black Golf GTI. My brother Ibby will tell you that we used to go and soup up cars. We used to go, we used to go golf racing. We used to go, <laughs> I changed my rims. I put a base box in the back. I blacked out the windows. I blacked the lights. I thought I was a, a girl racer. That was my thing. I invested everything in this whip, you know. Only to find out that my ex was sleeping with a girl in my car. But we won't go there. So... Oh, and then he crashed the car. He crashed the car on the motorway on the way to Watford to see another chick. And I got a call from the fire brigade to say that your car's on fire in the middle of the motorway. But yeah, that was my first investment. And that wasn't good. So forever. It was only until last year that I paid off my student loan. They say student loans are interest free, but it's not. Read this fine print. It says based on inflation. Inflation is interest because the cost of living, aka inflation, goes up and up and up and up and up. And so when you think you've only taken out nine grand, you've probably actually taken out about 12 grand. And I paid, I only finished paying my student loan off at 37. And this was probably about 10, 15 years after I, I got my first degree. So I know I've made bad financial choices. I met someone who was able to advise me better financially um, and give me invaluable advice to money. Sometimes I still get tempted, you know, but sometimes I shop. I shop because I'm low in mood. I shop because I want to feel better by myself. I want to feel sexy. I want to feel desirable. So I go on pretty little thing and I buy clothes. I shouldn't. I have a wardrobe full of clothes, but I'm convinced and I convince myself that that one body, but obviously I have to buy the jeans to go with the body. Then I've got to buy the shoes to go with the, that. Then I need a jacket to go with that. And then I need some new hoops. Not like I haven't got enough hoops because those that know me know that I have about 55 pairs of hoops. 
So I buy them all. And then I justify it by texting my mate and saying, can you give me your student discount code? <laughs> but it's okay, because it's 10% in it. And it's all right, I've saved some money. That's poor. What I really need to do is think about my mind, why I'm making these choices. I set a budget. This person that came into my life gave me a, um, a budget and um, it was really strict and I needed that, you know. I need like an accountability partner, someone that checks in with me and tells me when and where and how I should be spending because I am not safe on my own. I make very emotional financial choices. I make significant fuck ups <laughs> to my finances. It's not good. And I want to break free of this curse. And I call it a curse because I try, I try really hard. But then I justify it and I say, well, actually, I should be allowed to spend my money. I work hard. How dare someone tell me how to spend it? You're not doing the job for me. But the fact of the matter is, if I want better for me and my daughter, if I want this house with the trampoline in the back, because that's the dream, you know, the dream is to buy the house with the trampoline. The dream is for her to, she says, go to people's houses. She says, mum, they've got stairs in their house. Do you know how bad I feel? Do you know, like, ugh, it crushes my soul when she says that. And I'm like, ugh, I know. I grew up with stairs in my house and I'm not saying it was a happier house. But just the aspiration that she has that that equals success. I want to show her that mama is also successful. That mama can also do it. That I can take charge of my finances and get to grips with it. There's a part of me that's like, oh, a couple of years are going to be 40, you know, if you don't sort this out. So I am putting a lot of pressure on myself. I don't know why, because I think 40 is supposed to be the new 30. Let's have it right. But I'm still looking at my younger peers and seeing them buying homes and thinking, you failed. You haven't done what you need to do. Granted, they haven't lived my life. They haven't been homeless. I've been homeless. They haven't paid rent first time I paid rent was on my 18th birthday I've been paying rent for 20 years and my friends who have bought houses haven't had to do that so I shouldn't compare myself to them but I do because I set high standards for myself I set goals for myself I set desires and and plans for myself I want to do better and I'm committing to a better financial future I've started looking at like stocks, shares, so it's a whole new world. So I'm looking at multiple stream, streams of income that don't mean I have to leave the house. Because if you've got no childcare and if you're not shot in <laughs> from your door, what else can you do? And that's maybe buying stocks, maybe buying shares, but you've got to know what you're doing. But you also have to have the money to invest in that in the first place. And if like me, you are on paycheck to paycheck that doesn't always help I think oh I must get a skill I must be able to do lashes isn't it like it's easy <laughs> like the chick that does my lashes shout out make lashes xoxo my my girl my g like she she hasn't worked hard for this skill but I think yeah let me just um I can do lashes isn't it it's not that easy let me go and do hair I can't even do my daughter's hair what am I doing I am not skilled like that. I can't make money hosting because it's not guaranteed. Look at this. There were no shows in the whole of 2020. And if I relied on that completely, I'd be stuffed right now. So we go back to the drawing board and we wait for the government's money on the 24th of each month. And we hope that we hope that they've made a mistake and put another couple hundred in there just in case, you know. So now I've got the paycheck coming early this month because it's December and when you work for the council you get paid a little bit early so the sensible person in me is like right you need to plan you need to budget for this money don't you you do right but what's going to happen you're going to go and you're going to buy Ashley your child another three presents that she doesn't need because you've already bought her three but then you feel bad because it, the tree doesn't look full right 
it doesn't look fat enough there's not enough presence and it's not fair on her that just because she's only got you around and you know now you're a single mom and now you've separated from her dad and you know now you, you your mom has died and you now she doesn't have a grandma and you feel like you've got to overcompensate for everything so i buy more presents and then i regret it because i'm like oh shit i put it on klana in it and the, but then i forget 30 days klana wants their money too and then there's January and it's a longer month. So I don't actually have the money to pay it. Then Klana starts writing me, tells me, but I, I need to pay them their money. And then I don't open that letter and then I get another default. The cycle continues. I used to have about 15 cards. I used to pay nursery fees from my cards. I've taken out loans to pay nursery fees. That's to tell you how bad it was. I've made some mistakes, but I am now committed to thinking before I act. I decline nights out. I decline dinners. I decline um, even party nights because, to be fair, once you get your hair done, or even if you do it yourself, get your nails done, or you do it yourself, you already start on a minus, right? You buy something, whatever, the Uber to get there, the petrol to get there. Say you start on £50 minus. You then spend £15 on the ticket. That's... 65 don't watch me i only got a dm maps allow me in it then you buy a drink it's 10 pound for one drink and i'm not talking about a bottle i'm talking about one dead drink that you drink down in half a second so now i'm at what 75 then i get another drink because no man ain't buying me no drink no more so that's 85 then i didn't even like the rave you know so i got mad got in my car then i went bagel king spent another seven pound i'm at 80 something pound 82 pound for what Nah, it's a joke, T. So, you know, after COVID, when everything opens up, I think I'm still going to keep my ass in my yard. But you might be thinking that I saved some money over COVID because I wasn't going out. There, my friend, you're wrong. I didn't. Why didn't I? I don't know. You tell me. I should have money, right? Where's the money gone? Oh, I know. Amazon. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cancel my Amazon. No, I'm not. I'm lying to you. But there is always something that I need on Amazon. Always. There's a new mop with the spray ting. Love that. Make it easier. There's always something that I need. What am I going to do? How am I going to change this? So if you've got any <laughs> any feedback to give me, don't judge me, but put it in the comments. But as you can see, finance is something that is a very complex a very catastrophic, life-changing, confusing type of area in my life. It causes me sleepless nights. It, I have insomnia as it is. It adds to that. It adds to the drama. I cannot do that anymore. I now will take a stand on this podcast and tell you next year will be different. Thank you again for listening to my ramblings. Um, I'm really looking forward to our next podcast, which is about plastic surgery. Another money making, money spending area, but it's going to be great. So make sure you subscribe to Winging It and support my journey. Um, There is a meme that goes around that says you can't look to friends or family to support your journey. Strangers will do them before your friends and family do. I beg to differ. So I'm tasking all my friends and family to please subscribe and leave your comments on Apple, Spotify or iTunes about what you think about my podcast and share, share, share. Love you all.